the new colours yet, Jack? Yeah, I've come around to them pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it was pretty foreign at the start. I, um, I don't know, I, I guess going back in September, October last year, I didn't think I'd end up at Port, so I um, couldn't be more excited and I was willing to wear whatever colours and um, my girlfriend tells me teal, teal suits me, so that's what you can go off of. Can you tell us about that? I, we heard from Watsy getting a call from you, but originally the call from Ken to you, how did that happen? And what do we just look down and see an unknown number pop up? Or? Yeah, it was a bit like that. I was honestly sitting there on my couch. Uh, I actually had a, an exam the next day back in Melbourne and got a phone call and <coughs> said, oh, I need to meet you um, within the next 24 hours. And I was like, well, I've actually got an exam tomorrow. He goes, well, you better drive to the exam because you're going to have to drive straight to the airport from there so it was a bit of a whirlwind but um, yeah finished my exam luckily I passed in the end but um, didn't think I was going to there for a while and flew straight to Adelaide Ken picked me up from the airport sat down with him for a couple of hours and by the end of it I'd sort of pretty much signed a deal or a handshake at least so I was extremely excited as you can imagine and um, yeah, I guess because of my friendship with Watsy, I was pretty quick to tell him and he was over in Montreal at the time and he was beside himself so he quickly jumped on to realestate.com to figure out where we are going to live and um, yeah, it was a, you know, a bit of a, I guess, excitement from then on telling the family and everything like that and coming back to old school friends and everything so um, as I said, I'm absolutely loving life back here and um, couldn't be happier. So that was your first contact before that did you have any inkling at all that Port was looking at you? No I guess AFL clubs are pretty good at holding their cards pretty close to their chest these days and I guess for me I was just going in with very low expectations and just I guess expecting the worst but hoping for the best and um, I think the best outcome, def best outcome definitely came and as I said when that call came I was sort of just trying to convince Ken in every way possible to take me and um, give me another chance because that's all I felt that I needed. How do you sell yourself? Um, well, the South Australian thing certainly helps um, with family and friends. It's easy to come back and I said I'll help Watsy in any way I can possibly do that. Um, so I literally threw out everything and um, yeah, obviously he took it, didn't he? <laughs> um, and what about being back with family? Is that something that you think can help your football? I, I know you're you know, living away from them and all that, but does that help just being a part of family, friends, all that kind of thing again, do you think? Yeah, I guess it would probably, we'll have to wait and see, but I certainly think it will only help me um, living away from my family. I guess you finish year 12 here in Adelaide and get shipped off straight away over to Melbourne, a foreign city with not knowing many people, but you go into a footy club and you meet new people and, you know, my girlfriend's over in Melbourne now and um, moving back here will certainly only help getting back closer to family and friends and it's probably all those little things that you took for granted when you lived in Adelaide around them it's taken away from you when you move away so all those little things like I've got a little niece that lives up in Oru, um, you know my schoolmates that I haven't been able to see regularly for so long all those little things will come back to me now which I'm really excited to sort of do in the next 12 months. And what about today? How did you come back? Obviously, pretty tough out there. You doing some some sprints and stuff. Uh, how the boys come back, and how have you come back? Yeah, you know, as you can see, I'm still sweating from coming straight off the track. But um, no, it's really good. I think. Um it's one of those things for me at the moment. I'm certainly still in the honeymoon phase at Port. I'm enjoying every second of it, and I will continue to do that, I think. So um, previous years, you can find it's a bit of a grind sometimes in pre-season, but at the moment, I can't get enough of it. And um, the Christmas break was ended up being about two and a half weeks, which is probably a few days longer than normal. I just wanted to get back into it, and um, I think all the boys are really excited, and it's a very exciting year ahead, and we're all sort of really pumped to get out there and put our best foot forward to make sure that we're striving for greatness um, you know, throughout the whole season. And it's a pretty new list. You know, I think there's 11 or so new players. And um, so sort of just getting that gel together. And it's not long now until games will start. Once you hit Christmas, it um, all comes around pretty quickly. So everyone's really excited just to push hard for the next sort of month or so and then get stuck into games. Mate, some of the other blokes, has has Bobby tracking? Yeah, Robbie's going really well. I think um, you boys would have seen him out there. He's, you know, training the house down and he's just had a, a little child just before Christmas. So I'm sure he's lacking a bit of sleep over the Christmas break and coming into the next few weeks. But, um, you know, I've met Robbie a few times before I came over to Port and he's just the ultimate professional and um, goes about his business really well. And I really look up to him. And, um, yeah, as I said, he's training really well. So hopefully it sort of continues on into the season. Any young blokes that have caught your eye that have come back in extra special? 
Um, well, I don't want to put anyone out there, but um, you know, there's probably a few young guys. I certainly learnt my lesson in my early days that you know the off season and Christmas break. If you sort of don't do the program, you sort of get shown out. And I certainly haven't seen any anything of that in the first day in the, the first 24 hours or so. So I think everyone sort of you know really professional and got their training program done, ate well over the break, and um, ready to sort of hit the ground running. So that's all we can sort of ask for, and I think everyone's done that. Did you allow yourself to indulge? all over the Christmas break. Was the matter of being professional and sticking to that program? Uh, you got to stick to the program, but they let you a, li- a few little leeways. I think we're allowed to have a crack on Christmas Day and just eat the house down, so I'm sure all the boys made the most of that, and you can't turn away Christmas pudding on Christmas Day, can you? So I went for seconds on that day, but apart from that, um, no, it was pretty strict. When you met with Ken, did he explain what your role would be in the team, or how do you sort of see yourself fitting into the side? Yeah, I think um, for me personally, uh, I think I can play a number of different roles but um, you know I think where the game's going at the moment you have to be able to sort of be versatile and flexible with different positions because if you just sort of pigeon your whole yourself to one position you probably won't unless you're an out and out star who's you know the best in the game in that position it's pretty hard to hold your spot so um, you know speaking with Ken early days it's sort of through the midfield maybe half back half forward and you know the ability to play a number of roles and fill some holes if need be but I'm um, certainly aware of the situation where I'm in and I'm sort of coming from, it's a pretty tough side to break into and very competitive, so I'm going to have to work really hard in the next month or so to keep pushing my case, but you know, it might be a thing that I start the, at the Magpies and really have to prove myself before I get an opportunity, and if that's the case, then I'm all for it. And um, As I sort of alluded to a few times, it's a bit of a free kick for me this year. I didn't think it was coming, so... You know, I'm really excited to attack it and play whatever role sort of is thrown at me. So, did you think your career was over? Like after the, obviously the injuries, but you know, you're coming back last year. You know, playing a few AFL games, mainly BFL, and then obviously being delisted. Do you think that? Did you think that was it? Well, it's one of those ones that I, I certainly never wanted to believe that. You know, I thought that I had plenty more to offer and um, yeah, plenty more to give. And I guess it's one of those ones that the longer the off season goes and you're not getting that phone call you probably start to your mind starts to go towards all right well what's next what am I going to do next year and I was probably just about at that point where I was thinking you know what am I going to do for um, some money next year and um, where am I going to play footy and things like that and then an opportunity came and I just jumped at it so um, yeah I was certainly sitting on my couch that day thinking I just want one more opportunity to prove myself and in a fresh environment new set of eyes new teammates new surroundings and um, to come to a club like Port who've got you know the most passionate supporters in the comp and um, everyone in the club's been so welcoming and um, yeah I don't think I could have fit in any better at the moment so um, yeah I think I'm just so excited to, to get into it and get games coming around because you know you train for so long and now you want to go out and really earn the respect and earn the trust from your teammates and coaches so um, yeah I'm really looking forward to doing that. It seems like it's going to be nice to play without uh, as much expectation as you've had in the past number two, early captain, all these sort of things. Yeah. I kind of wanted you to, to be the man every week, but as you said, you are nearly out on the doorstep as such. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be nice to play like this this year? Yeah, like I honestly feel like I'm a rookie coming in my first year and um, literally starting at the bottom and just trying to do everything to earn the respect and trust my teammates like I alluded to just before and um, it is quite sort of, I don't know, I guess a, a bit fresh, like a nice feeling to come in and have that little expectation because everything you do is going to sort of, um, I guess, go above and beyond it. So. Um, you know, it was a bit of a burden there at times, no doubt, but also you need pressure to really um, get the best out of yourself as well. So I'm certainly putting internal pressure on myself to make sure that I'm performing each training session, you know, and everything that I do, I'm the ultimate professional. But um, yeah, it's nice to sort of come in in sort of under wraps and just, you know, work hard myself and within myself to really earn a, an opportunity. And what about um, many running sessions with your sister Jess since you've moved back to Adelaide? <laughs> We've got slightly different programs, and um, <laughs> I try to steer clear when I can. But we usually do a Christmas Day um, run, but she was over in, on the Air Peninsula on Christmas, so I miss out with her, which I'm probably pretty thankful for. But um, now we certainly compare notes, and I'm not 
um, clocking up anywhere near as many kilometres as her. I don't even drive that many k's in a week, let alone run them. So, um, nah, it's, it, it's nice to sort of be not closer to her as well and sort of we bounce off each other and bounce different ideas of training programs and ways we go about it and even sort of nutrition and diet and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's nice to sort of be back closer to her, especially leading into the Commonwealth Games. Has her career inspired you a bit with what she's been able to do? No doubt. I think um, no athlete in her position or any of those sort of runners around Australia get the credit that they deserve because they put in so much work and obviously we're very fortunate as footballers because there's a big following we get paid pretty handsomely compared to to them but you know they put in just as much if not harder work than us and they have to hold down a part-time job as well so um, I've certainly got so much respect for her and her sort of fellow athletes who work so hard day in day out to sort of I guess just to feed themselves and give themselves a chance at um, you know the highest possible sort of event like in the Olympics or Commonwealth Games so she certainly inspired me and continues to inspire me. How does your running fit in here? Running you know, time trials always been a strength of yours. How do you fit in Port Adelaide? Yeah, well, I think I've certainly got the um, long-distance genes in the name. Um, um, the, the bad thing about time trials these days is getting shorter and shorter, so they're making it harder for me. But, um, no, there's a bunch of really fit guys out here, so I'm just trying to sort of fit in as best possible and great guys to train with, and I feel like I'm the fittest I've been for years at the moment, so that's all I can really ask for, and hopefully it translates into playing good footy. Do you think about the foot anymore? Nah, I guess there's probably an element of management still just because it's one of those things when we're sort of pumping out, pumping out high Ks each week. It's a total load sort of thing, so I don't sort of overdo it. Um, but, you know, going back a couple of years, every morning I'd wake up and that first step I'd be like, hell, how's this going to go? But um, at the moment, it's honestly never felt better and I'm going out there and not even thinking about it and that's probably the best frame of mind I can possibly be in. So I think it's reflecting in the how sort of the fitness levels that I'm currently at and hopefully it just continues to, to grow.